Hello there and welcome to Sailing Allison. It's very definitely autumn now. Um, although there's not very much wind, the swell outside of the harbour is something to see. It's, I think it's close to three metres. Even in the harbour we're still seeing a bit of it. So we're going up and down and you can hear all the creaking of the lines. Uh, interesting one today. I have been having a little bit of a problem which took me a while to figure out. So what was happening is that the inverter charger was shutting down and there were two lights flashing. When I looked at the manual what I discovered is that that indicates uh, that the battery voltage is varying by outside of the like the the tolerance range and it shuts down because it thinks there's something wrong with the battery and i was thinking all sorts of complicated reasons why this might be and uh and i was looking at it and i was measuring the current and voltage and it was only after a couple of hours and when i was actually packing up the boat I figured it out, it's obvious. What's happening is that the BMS is detecting that one of the battery cells has got uh, too high and so it, it, what it does is it shuts off so that it can't overcharge a single cell. That is being detected as a low voltage and the battery voltage changing too much by the inverter charger which is then switching off. So it's something that only happens at a high state of charge but the bad thing is that it also cuts off the AC supply which is really annoying uh, especially now as it's getting close to winter I'm actually running a heater to keep the boat from getting too damp. I'm not quite sure what to do about this one of the things I could do is just install a bypass switch on the 240 volts so that when the battery is pretty much fully charged I can just have the AC running straight from the shore power uh, and that will stop that thing happening that's quite simple to do um, the other thing I can do is keep researching the BMS's maybe Victron does a BMS that will talk to the inverter charger and kind of stop this happening Anyway, in the meantime, what I've done is I've got myself one of these, um, what they call Coulomb meters, which measures the amount of power that's going, to, going through the battery. So I'm going to install that today, just wire it up temporarily, and have a look and see how high I'm managing to charge the battery, and then also see how low I can discharge, and I'll have an idea of what percentage of the total charge that I'm actually getting currently. So here is the battery monitor, I think they call it. Uh, as you see, it's 100 volts, 350 amps. I've been watching quite a few YouTube videos about this and uh, particularly Will Prowse and I probably should have gone for the 500 amp version but to be honest I don't spend a lot of time I don't intend to spend a lot of time at 350 amps I mean the motor runs quite happily at 50 amps so I don't think it's going to be a particular problem so let's see what's inside so we've got the display here and we've got 350 amp shunt with a connector for the battery plus that powers the whole thing and also allows it to monitor the voltage and then we've got a connecting wire which isn't very long but we'll do for now There weren't any instructions in here, so I just looked up the model name on the internet and it seems sensible enough. Uh, the eBay page shows you how to wire it up, it all kind of makes sense. I and mean, this is obviously, that's fairly obvious, battery minus, power minus. Um, these just connect in one way 
and then uh, you have to run something from the positive to this terminal here. The only thing that's clever is so uh, when all this turns on, uh, I think you charge it up to full and then you press this button, the up arrow, for three seconds and that sets the, uh, the top voltage or the top of the power and then you discharge it right down to empty and you press that and that sets the, uh, the bottom so obviously it can then measure the state of charge uh, between those two levels. So let's see where we get to. Right, I've spared you the details of me uh, wiring it all up but basically I've put the shunt here so that's the output of the BMS there uh, through the shunt so it goes to the battery minus and then into my main negative bus bar. I've got a little wire here which is being run off the fuse box for the positive so that's giving me the battery voltage and then here is the connector cable. I haven't quite decided where this is going to go yet. Obviously this cable's quite short so uh, really I could only put it on the uh, front of the box probably but I don't know whether it'd be better in the cabin somewhere so uh, I might have to uh, make up a longer cable and uh, see if I can get that working. Anyway as you can see, uh, we've got 54.8 volts, uh, we've got uh, 0 0.04 amps, which is what, 20 milliamps, that's just uh, the gas detector and, uh, well that's it actually, that's all that's on, uh, nothing else at the moment, so I don't know what these buttons do. Uh, Right, so that's not bad. Uh, I'm going to reconnect the mains and see if I can get it um, charged up to a decent amount first. So I've turned the uh, charger on. You can see uh, charge voltage has gone up. 58.8. There it's cutting out. got 56.6 volts that's trying to charge up again just want to see what's happened on the charger side of things Okay, so the charger has now gone on to absorption. So we've obviously managed to complete the bulk charge of it. So it's just topping off the charge now. So hopefully this time we, we can manage to get to float. Let's have a look at what the voltage is saying. So the voltage is now saying 58.8 and yeah, no charge. So I think that we can say that this is now fully charged, which is pretty good. Just need to top it off. And we've got zero current. That's gradually dropping now. Let's see if the charger kicks in at all. Okay, so I'm gonna call that fully charged. Okay, so I have set the top capacity uh, to 100% and that was just by pressing the up arrow for three seconds. So the next thing I need to do is set the bottom, uh, which uh, involves discharging the battery. So I just need to turn the inverter charger off which I've done and now I will connect um, some power. <laughs> so uh, I think uh, maybe putting the heater on will uh, serve two purposes, one to dry the boat out and two to drain the battery. 
and uh, I think I just need to leave it until the BMS uh, um, kicks in and uh, cuts off the power. I've connected this little heater and we're now drawing a hole 4.6 amps so this is going to be really interesting. Uh, I'm going to do the kettle as well, see what that looks like. So at the moment it's assuming that you've got 99 amp hours and I'm assuming that that's telling me how much uh, time I've got left. That's really good. So presumably when I can set the bottom then uh, that's going to be a really good way of telling how long I can run the motor for. Superb. I would run the motor except of course it's kind of just under here and I don't really want to do that at the moment. I've now put the kettle on as well which uh, as this kettle is 3 kilowatts and uh, the inverter is only 3 kilowatts is absolutely straining it to the limit and seems to be coping and I've got a whole 65.8 amps coming out so it looks like I could only boil a kettle for uh, an hour and 40 minutes of course uh, this is based on the idea that I've only got uh, 98 amp hours but uh, once I get down to zero and I can set to the zero point then uh, hopefully uh, we'll be able to uh, get a true idea of what the capacity of my system is. It's now the next morning and I've had the uh, all of the lights and VHF and everything I can think of turned on plus I've had a heater running all night and if I have a look at the battery voltage let's get that there. it's actually not gone down at all so uh, it was 52.4 when I left last night and it's still that now um, I'm going to try and put the engine on the motor on for a bit and see if I can drain a little bit but I'm just going to leave it to go I don't think that that 10% is at all indicative of the actual state of charge I think that's just because um, you know I haven't set the bottom point yet right let's give this a go so I've got the motor running this is at the first notch kind of quarter speed, I don't know how fast it actually means it's going, but you can see that we've got 18.2 amps now, so I'm just going to run it like this for a bit and uh, try and get rid of a bit of uh, the battery capacity. It's now the afternoon. And as you can see, it's now reading zero amp hours left, but the voltage is still at 52.2. So there's obviously still a lot of power reserve left in there. I have um, boiled another kettle and it, it went absolutely fine. So uh, obviously there's still a lot of power left in there. It's now the evening time. And you can see we've still got 52.1 volts. So uh, I'm going to run the motor for a little bit and then uh, leave it overnight. So well over uh, 24 hours so far, which is great. What you should expect, I suppose. Right, let's do it. We're now at the second morning. And as you can see, uh, we're still at 52.1. Uh, with the 0.99 amps so that means the heater has just switched itself off uh, so yeah we're still doing very well obviously there is a lot of capacity in this battery which is comforting just gonna turn the kettle on again there we are you can see straight away 
up to 61.6 amps. Here we go, 67.5. We've now been going for over two days and we've still got 51 volts. So, uh, yeah, getting there. Okay, so now it is the next afternoon. When I came down this morning, the battery had fully discharged. So I set the low, um, the zero point on the battery by pressing this down arrow until you get a beep and uh, then put the charger on. Um, pro tip for the Victron inverter chargers, you have to start them off on charge only, which, which I did. So it must have been charging for, what's that since? Uh, probably about eight hours now. And as you can see, we are at 73% state of charge, 202 amp hours, looks pretty good. And you might just be able to hear the fan on the inverter charger going because obviously it's uh, getting quite warm in there. So very cool, 55, amp, uh, 55 volts, 24.3 amps charge current and uh, all looking very, very good. Good evening. You join me in a very bouncy Scarborough Harbour this evening. So the other problem that I had was that when the Victron was getting right to the top of the charge, it was the BMS was kicking in and it was cutting the power. And uh, this was causing the Victron inverter charger to think that the battery had gone low voltage and so that was complaining and that was shutting down. So I decided that the way to solve that is to actually slightly lower the maximum voltage that the Victron charges to. Now for lithium ion phosphate batteries really right at the top of the charge curve you're only getting like a few percent so dropping that maximum voltage will make very little difference because what's happening is that one of the cells in the um, the 16 cells of the 48 volt battery is very very slightly higher and so that one is getting to its maximum voltage before all of the others and then the BMS is kicking in and saying right I need to stop the charge now so there's a couple of ways of doing this. The first one is that there's a whole load of dip switches that are on the one of the circuit boards of the Victron and you can kind of set them up and you can do all the settings through that. But I looked through that and that's a real pain to do. So I decided that a much easier approach is actually to connect a computer to the um, the inverter charger and the Victron has got some software that you can download and if you connect it together then you can see a whole load of settings and you can set it all up how you want. So here's the Victron interface thing. So it's got a connector here, this accepts a standard network cable and then the other end is USB. So I've got the network cable coming out of the inverter charger uh, round to the interface and then via this into my MacBook Pro and I've loaded up Victron Connect and as you can see there uh, it's detected the uh, MultiPlus. So if I click on that now I get a whole load of stuff. So you can see that I've got uh, AC coming in. Uh, it's set to charger only. Um, the reason I've done that is that I think I read somewhere that that's what you're supposed to do. So you can see now the uh, battery is being charged. 
uh, it's at 53.68 volts 21 degrees C um, I have got the temperature sensor connected to the battery for this I don't think it's particularly important for lithium ion phosphate batteries it's more a thing for lead acid but uh, I did it anyway uh, and it's telling you it's charging with maximum current until absorption voltage reached yeah so that's interesting isn't it that's 219 volts uh, so it shows you that the power that I'm getting off uh, the pontoon is quite a lot less than um, you would normally expect so you'd normally expect that to be around about 230 240 volts frequency is what you'd expect so we've got an AC out output running at the moment so there is a like a pass through uh, it's not connected to anything and then you can see the battery voltage charging current and so on and then if you hit this yeah, so you get a thing that allows you to in order to access the settings menu you have to put in the password you can look it up it's easy enough to find online and this gives you all sorts of uh, interesting stuff. The thing that we want is the charger section. So I've messed around with this a little bit. So this is what I have set up. Charge current 26 amps, which I think I left that as it was. Absorption voltage. So this is what it'll uh, go up to 56.8. Float voltage 55.2. Uh, repeated absorption in for seven days. I've set up the lithium battery mode, and I think if you do this, it tells you what the effect is. So basically, in lithium mode, there's no temperature compensation, and going back into bulk voltage is uh, at a lot lower level. That's because lithium batteries, they uh, sort of stay at very similar voltage uh, right throughout most of their charging range. So, um, as I say, I actually did change this here and it solved my problem. So now I don't get uh, the uh, BMS disconnecting just as uh, it gets to the top of the charge. Uh, it all seems to be fine.